Hello there, I'm Leo Waldock for Kick Guru. I've not yet been briefed on AMD Fiji, which is why I'm leaping in at this point with a bit of speculation and um, some informed guesswork. I have been briefed on HBM high bandwidth memory, which is the memory that Fiji is going to use. This is stacked chips that use an interposer, and instead of having a 256-bit or 512-bit uh, memory controller that connects to the GPU, it has an ultra-wide high bandwidth uh, controller, which is thousands of bits wide. And the idea is then you can run the memory slower, and the massive bandwidth means that you get colossal uh, gigabits per second of uh, connection. That's fine. The consequence is that you can uh, feed less power to your memory, um, and that's fine as well. However, it seems highly likely that AMD will take the saved power from the, um, from the memory and instead feed extra power to the graphics chip, which considering that AMD is already behind Nvidia in terms of uh, power draw and efficiency, that's a concern. That's speculation on my part, but it seems very likely. During uh, Computex, uh, I did a news piece when I was in the Sapphire stand, which is a room upstairs in one of the exhibition halls, um, as opposed to the actual um, floor, where they had all their various stuff on show, and there was a door that said no entry. That was their NDA room, and in there were various bits and pieces, including, I am quite sure, AMD Fiji. Now, the thing was, they were taking in customers, uh, people who are going to buy stuff and pay money and they were showing them Fiji and apparently Fiji was working. Oh, obviously no one's telling me this directly, they're simply saying, mm. um, but the people going in are people that are going to be buying stuff. Press were excluded from the NDA room under orders of AMD and indeed I spoke to a guy from AMD called Ron Myers who uh, very much confirmed this. Uh, he came up with some stuff about it it's because we're trying to build the, uh, the, the thrill and the what's it, the anticipation for AMD Fiji. So be it. The thing is, there have been plenty of documented instances where the press have been broadly speaking lied to when it's come to uh, launches and briefings about all sorts of products, but particularly graphics, but all sorts of things. They hold up a thing, they go, here's this shiny thing, and it's not. It's, it's a piece of wood with some stuff on it and a sticker on it, and they're claiming it's a graphics card, and it's not. Um, but then they're holding it in their hand. They're not running it, so, you know, what the heck, it's a prop. Um, we know this. If, on the other hand, you have in a room, you have a PC with your graphics card that's going to be launching in but a few weeks' time, and you're showing it to paying customers, people are going to part with their hard money. I cannot see why on earth you wouldn't show it to the press. We all know that manufacturers are going to pick a benchmark or a demo or something that shows off their product in the best light. That's only human nature. They're going to show this thing, and you know, even if they don't show 3D Mark or game or whatever, um, and they don't show the actual score it gets, and they claim it's development hardware and the driver's still in whatever it might be, and the final driver's coming in a few weeks, and they, they fudge it a bit, that's all fine. But they'll show you the thing working and they'll point to some aspect like smoke or hair or textures or whatever. And they go, this is all wonderful. None of that. They're showing it to paying customers, apparently, but they're not showing it to me and the other journals. And I don't understand that because if a thing is on the verge of launch, then it must be in a position where they can show it to the press, even if they're not giving away all the feeds and speeds about clocks and so on. And I find this actually troubling. Now the thing is, the thing about HBM specifically means that when AMD Fiji comes out running with HBM, uh, the memory has this massive controller. That means you can be quite clear, and AMD has not told me this, this is just informed speculation, that internally the chip must have been reworked because the data is coming through huge pipes at a slightly slower speed, which means you get this massive bandwidth. Therefore, it must have been changed compared to the current Hawaii chip, for example. It would be insane if they haven't changed it to handle this different memory controller. If they've done that, that means you've got a fork in the roadmap. You've got the stuff that uses HBM and the stuff that uses GDDR5 memory. Now, here's the other thing. 
There have been leaks galore all over the internet, mainly coming out of China and such like, and Anton's covered these on Kit Guru, where it seems quite clear that uh, we're currently on the AMD R9 and R7 200 series of graphics chips, and we're about to move to 300. It is crystal clear the product stack of 300 is this, and then it has Fiji. And Fiji is HBM, and the 300 stuff is, in actual fact, rebadged 200 stuff. The precise model code of what exactly is what uh, remains to be seen, but for instance, it seems quite clear that what is currently R9290, which is a Hawaii technology, which was launched in uh, late 2013, will become R9380, for example. So 290 may well become 380. Uh, that remains to be seen. Thing was that the current stack, the 200 series, the only new architecture was Hawaii. All the other stuff going down the um, uh, things, which again, they're all islands in the uh, West Indies. Uh, so uh, Curacao and Bonaire and Pitcairns and whatever else, um, they were in turn rebadges from the previous series. So for example, uh, HD 7970, which dates from 2011, became R9280X, that may well become R9380. Now, I may be wrong about which model code is which model code is which model code, but the principle of the HD 7000 stuff dating back from 2011, which is already R92 whatever the heck, becoming R93 whatever the heck, that means that those chips when they launch as R93, whatever the heck, very shortly, they're going to be four years old. In and of itself, that's not the end of the world necessarily, except NVIDIA currently has some really good hardware. Now, right now, today, you wouldn't rush out to buy an R9200, whatever the heck, unless it's quite cheap. If you're after ultra gaming performance, you go for NVIDIA. The AMD stuff has its place, but unfortunately, its place is as the cheaper option because you're suffering on power draw, you're suffering on heat. It does a job, no two ways about it. The idea that it's right and proper to then rebadge it and make it 300 series strikes me as just ridiculous. And the problem is when they rebadged, AMD rebadged uh, all the HD 7000 stuff as 200 series, it didn't go out of their way to spell it out. Hawaii was new, and then there were these other products. It didn't say every single last man jack of them was rebadged, apart from the addition of true audio on some of them. They didn't spell that out at all. It only became painfully obvious when we got the hardware. Go, hang on a minute, we've been conned. That tasted bad two years ago. If, if, they're doing the same thing again in a few weeks' time with the 300 series, literally changing the box, possibly not even changing the bias, coming up with a driver revision. That is going to be annoying, depressing, slightly scandalous, and really worrying. We need AMD in the game. They, the AMD currently does not compete with Intel in any meaningful sense of the word. We need AMD to be able to compete with NVIDIA. Now, my concern here is that the way it's going is that Fiji may or may not be a good one. Essentially, the benchmark here is, does Fiji compare with GTX 980 or not? If it does, does it compare with GTX 980 Ti or not? Does it compare with Titan or not? That's the, the question there. And then how much they're going to charge you for the privilege. Uh, I have absolutely no idea the answer to that. I hope to Christ it can take on GTX 980. Because if it can't, that's desperately bad news. If it can take on GTX 980 Ti, great. You have to suspect that NVIDIA brought out GTX 980 Ti because they're anticipating that Fiji is going to take the fight to 980 and they're saying, but look, we've got Ti. It could be that AMD is in fact playing a long game and that they can in fact leapfrog 980, possibly leapfrog 980 Ti. I believe that when I see it, it's not impossible. I don't believe for a moment that uh, Fiji is going to take on Titan. Not for one second do I believe that. I wish to Christ it was true. I don't think it will be. The thing is, even if Fiji is brilliant and works perfectly, the two concerns I have are that it is going to have a power draw, I am certain of this, that is higher than GTX 980. I am as certain of that as certain can be, and that's the, what I derived from the briefing on HBM. The other concern is that HBM is limited to 4 by one gigabyte stacks, so 4 gigabytes total. We have in recent times been sort of 
educated or trained to believe that four gigabytes isn't really enough for 4K gaming. You need six, eight, possibly even 12 gigabytes. And that may or may not be true. Ron Myers was quite adamant when I asked him that direct question to say that's to do with bandwidth. If you've got four gigabytes of GDDR5 on this memory controller here with this much bandwidth, then yeah, you need more than four gigabytes. On the other hand, four gigabytes of HBM with this ultra wide bandwidth, different game, you have to change your rules. I hope he's given me the straight gen. I hope this is true. But if it is, it means that we're going to have to educate gamers to say, look, don't get hung up on four gigabytes. You have to look at four gigabytes of what? And as people say, if you're explaining, you're not winning. And so that's a slight concern that Fiji needs to be really good. And then you've got to say that Fiji with four gigabytes of high bandwidth memory is better than or comparable with GTX 980, whichever version with however much memory. That's a bit of a mixed message. And we can only hope that it's like that because at the moment, AMD only rules, in my opinion, in one sphere, and that's gaming consoles. Well, the gaming consoles that are using an APU, I'm talking PS4 and Xbox One, uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're no advance over PS3 and Xbox 360. Um, the idea that we've got new alleged next-gen gaming consoles that are limited to 720p gaming in the main, I find utterly ridiculous. The idea we haven't got a grunty powerhouse that can drive through full HD and with the intention of doing 4K just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. What that says to me is the gaming consoles, they were done around AMD, AMD APU because it was cheap. It's easy to develop the games because it's x86, as is PC gaming. The hardware is cheap, I presume. Um, the power envelope is completely manageable. It's known technology. And the people that do not benefit are gamers. That's a slight sideshow, but it doesn't give me any confidence whatsoever that there's this new super duper gaming hardware coming along. Fiji might be brilliant. It might absolutely hit the mark. I sincerely hope it does. The thing is, if Fiji is stellar, and takes on GTX 980 and is hopefully a bit cheaper and it's just great and four gigabytes of HBM is all you need, happy. However, I am sitting here right now, and I may be utterly wrong, convinced that the rest of the product stack, the ARM uh, 300 series, is going to be rebadged 200 series. And apart from the Hawaii, the uh, R9290, which may well become R9380, apart from that, all the rest is actually 2011 uh, product. Uh, now, AMD is undeniably going to focus on GCN technology and which version of DirectX is supported and so on and so forth. That's all fine. But that's only a very small part of the story. The fact is that today, would you rush out to buy an HD 7970 AKR92, whatever the heck? Well, you're not. That's the fact of the matter. Uh, so the idea you're going to rush out and buy it soon with a different number on it um, provided you know what it is you're buying and you're not being conned, then uh, no, I don't think you will.